The purpose of this video is to go over in detail this review for a trigonometric functions test. And the first question, we'll start in the multiple choice, asks, what is the translation for y equals sine and in brackets x minus 20 degrees from the basic y equals sine x function? And the 20 degrees is how far it's been shifted. Now this is a horizontal translation or a phase shift right or left. To know whether it goes right or whether it goes left, it's always x minus the amount and direction. So it says x minus 20. The 20 is actually a positive number that's subtracted from the x. And so that's why it's going to the right. If it had said instead here, if there is a plus here, if it actually had said x plus 20, see it's always x minus the number. So you actually would have to think of that as x take away negative 20. And in that case, I won't bother the degree symbol. In that case, it would actually be 20 to the left because there's the negative 20 that would take it to the left. So this one just says x minus 20. So the 20 is 20 to the right. And so that's why b is the correct answer for number one. For number two, what's the period for y equals 7 cos x? Now, it's just cos 1x here. So the basic cosine or sine function has a period of 360 degrees. And so this one is no different. The 7 actually just changes the amplitude. It has an amplitude of 7 instead of 1. Okay, but that has nothing to do with period. So the period would be 360 just like the y equals cos x function would have a period of 360 degrees. So d is the correct answer for number 2. Number 3, what is the translation for this function, y equals cos x plus 5 from y equals cos x? The plus 5, now notice these all have 5s, but it's a matter of, you know, is it left, right, up, or down? The 5 is added to the entire function, which is the same as adding it to the y values. So that's why it would shift it 5 up. And so C is the correct answer for number 3. For question number 4, we're asked, what is the period for y equals negative 2 cos 4x minus 5? Well, the basic uh, period is 360, like from question 2 here. So what you would do is you would take 360 degrees and you would divide it by this 4 from the 4x. So if you divide 4 into 360, that gives you 90 degrees. And so that is uh, for number 4, answer A over here. So A is the correct answer for question number 4. For number 5, you're asked, what is the amplitude of this function, y equals 9 sine x minus 3? The amplitude is the number in front, the 9. And so C would be the correct answer for number 5. Now, amplitude is always positive because it's just a distance. So that's what question 6 is about. You're asked, what is the amplitude for the function y equals negative 4 sine 2x plus 5? The, uh, the negative actually just reflects the graph compared to if it wasn't the negative there in the x-axis. So the 4 is still the amplitude. You would not say that the amplitude is a negative because amplitude is just a distance. So the correct answer for number 6 would be 4. On to question uh, number one in the second part, and there's two questions here, an A here and a B in the next page, where you're, uh, you're, you're given a function and you're asked to state the amplitude, period, phase shift, vertical translation, and draw a full cycle. So it's uh, y equals 4 sine x minus 3, so the 4 would be the amplitude. Now the period is the standard 360 degrees, uh, just like up here in the multiple choice uh, for question 2, 7 cos x, this period was also 360. Same idea. So there's no phase shift because there's nothing subtracted or added to the x. The minus 3 is subtracted from the whole 4 sine x function. So the, the vertical translation is 3 units down. That's the minus 3. So in order to draw this, I like to do the, uh, the vertical translation first. So there's the 3 units down. So once you've got that uh, line drawn at negative 3 horizontally, it's really like thinking the that's the x-axis. Okay, so everything's based on there. That's the horizontal line that goes uh, through the middle of the graph. And I'm going to use uh, a scale of, uh, so this is 90, 180, 270, 360. So actually the scale I'm actually using is uh, every block here would be 15 degrees. That would be 15, 30, 45, 
uh, 60, 75, and 90. So actually every block is 15 degrees. Uh, I just did it so that a full cycle was most of the way across this grid paper. Now we're, we're graphing uh, a sine function. So if you think of this as the x-axis, so this actually I'll make some marks here. So the graph would start here and then way over here at 360 it ends the cycle. It's going to cross right in the middle which would be at the 180. Now the amplitude is 4. So halfway between 0 and 180 which would be at 90 you'd be 4 units above here. So 1, 2, 3, 4. So that's why we have a maximum point there. And then halfway between 180 and 360 which would be at the 270 here we count 1, 2, 3, 4 and there's a minimum point right there. So once you've got those five points graphed, then you can draw your sine function between them or through them. So that's what the graph of y or one cycle of y equals 4 sine x minus 3 would look like. On to question b. We're given uh, y equals 5 cos 2 and in brackets x plus 45 degrees plus 1. So the amplitude would be 5, so there's the, the amplitude right there. The period would be, you divide this 2 into 360 degrees, so the period's 180 degrees. The 45 is the phase shift or horizontal translation, and it would go to the left. Remember, like the multiple choice, in order to see the exact value, you would have to write x plus 45 as x. Take away negative 45. So there is the 45 degrees to the left. The plus 1 is the vertical translation. The whole graph is translated up one unit. And so just like the previous one, I'll do that first. So there's the up 1. So that's the line that's going to go right through the middle of this uh, um, cosine curve. Now, uh, I've chosen the same scale here. So uh, there's my 90, 180, 270, 360, same as the previous one. So every block here is actually 15 degrees. So um, what we need that mostly for here is the phase shift at the beginning anyway. 45 degrees to the left. So if every block is 45, is uh, 15, sorry, I would need three of them to make 45 degrees. And so if we start right here on the y-axis at that uh, one up line, now we're graphing a cosine function, so we go... 45 degrees to the left, that's the phase shift, and a cosine function starts at a maximum point, which is supposed to be 5, because the amplitude is 5 above here. So, so I go from here on the y-axis on that horizontal line, 45 left, and then I count up 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. And so I'll put a dot right there. So that is uh, the beginning of a cycle. Now, the period is 180 degrees, so I start there, and I want to count in this direction 180 degrees, which would actually take me to right there. Well, if the graph wasn't already there, how do you know how far that is? Well, it's going to be the same distance as this. You see, it's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 blocks horizontally makes 90 degrees, and then another 6 would make 180. So 180 would actually be 12 of these little squares or blocks. So if I start here, I could go 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. And see, that is exactly where the 180 degrees would be to end that first cycle. Well, so a, a cosine graph normally is considered to start at a maximum, end with a maximum. So halfway between these two, there'd be a minimum point. So if I start at either end and go 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, then this is where the minimum point's going to be. And it, it'll be it will be six points below that one up line. So, no, sorry, six, five. The amplitude is five. So, one, two, three, four, five. So, I would put a dot right there. So, that's a minimum. So, I got three points. Now, it crosses halfway between uh, a maximum point and a minimum point, which would be right here. So, you see, that's three blocks from this end or three blocks in the middle. And the same thing over here. It's uh, three blocks from the middle or three blocks from the end. And once I have that, then I can draw my cosine shape. I've actually drawn um, a second one here and a little bit more of another one. Uh, we're only asked to draw one cycle, but there's two plus. 
Okay, last question here, an application question. Uh, we're given uh, that we have this windmill. Uh, it, it rotates as, as long as the wind is blowing. I guess the wind is blowing this day because the blades are turning. And so we have one of these blades has a mark on its tip or its end. And so we're actually graphing where that particular one is as it goes around the windmill. The length of each blade is 6 meters, and the tip of the blade is 3 meters above the ground when it's at its lowest point. And we're told that the windmill completes a full roof revolution every 4 seconds. So in A, you're asked to draw a graph of two full cycles, assuming the blades, that's the one we're talking about with the mark on it, uh, starts at the bottom. So it starts right here, three meters off the ground, and it takes four seconds to make a full revolution. So, uh, so this is where a cycle starts, this is where a cycle ends. So at two seconds, halfway between the beginning and the end, is where it would have its highest point. Well, exactly how high is that? You see, from the, the bottom here up to here, should be six. So if we start here and count one, two, three, four, five, six. See, that's the middle. And then six more up, one, two, three, four, five, six. So that's how I would know that the top would be there. And so uh, it starts here, it ends the cycle here, its maximum is here, and of course halfway between the maximum and a minimum point, or a top and a bottom, it would hit right in the middle and the same thing over here. So that right in the middle line that is actually the uh, the vertical translation right there. That would actually be at nine meters would be that's where the uh, the middle of the windmill would be. Uh, that's how high um, the point is where all the blades are attached. So that would have to be the middle of the windmill. So uh, so find the amplitude. The amplitude is 6 meters because that's the length of one of the blades. So it's 6 meters from, if we were actually to draw, so let's say that's a blade and maybe here's another blade. Now, well, this is going to work. Something like that. And maybe we'll draw one more. So that point that they're all attached, that point right there is the point that's nine meters off the ground. Because if a blade was straight down, it would be six meters to there, and then that point is three meters off the ground. So that's how it what it physically would look like. So the amplitude is six meters, because each blade is six meters long. The period we're told is four seconds, and so to write the equation, as you're asked to do this in uh, in part C here, uh, you take the basic 360 and divide it by the length of the period. The length of the period is four, so 360 divided by four is 90. So we'll need that for uh, question C when we write the equations or an equation. The phase shift. The phase shift depends on whether you're talking about the sine function or cos function. Remember, the sine function starts right in the middle. So this is the middle line right here. So that would be the beginning of a sine cycle. And so there would be an entire sine cycle. So that horizontal distance is one second. And so this, for if you're doing sine, there is a, a phase shift or horizontal trans translation right of one second for sine. If you want to do cosine, cosine starts at uh, a maximum point, a, a cycle, we'd normally consider it. So there's a maximum point there, which is two seconds to the uh, right of the y-axis, and so, or the height axis, you might call it. So that's the two seconds if you want to do cosine. The vertical translation is the nine meters up that I was talking about here because this is three meters off the ground and then it's another six meters up to the middle and so that's the vertical translation. So we want to write um, a sine function uh, by equals six because six is the amplitude, sine 90, that's the k, uh, x minus one because the phase shift is uh, one second to the right for sine and then plus nine because the vertical translation is nine meters up. Now the only difference if you want to do cosine is the uh, is the uh, phase shift. So it would still be y equals 6 because the amplitude is 6, cos 90 because k is still 90 for both functions, and it would be x minus 2 
because the phase shift is 2 seconds to the right for cosine and still plus 9. So the two equations are quite similar, the phase shift and of course sine or cos being the only difference between the two of them. And that's the end of the review.